Are you serious about turning your home into a smart home using one of these, you know, fancy gadgets? If you are, the one question you have to ask yourself is, how good is your Wi-Fi? I've learned that if it's not great, your smart home performance is definitely going to suffer to the point where you get so annoyed with all the smart home gadgets that you stop using them. That's what happened to me in 20, at the end of 2017. I was trying to figure out why I wasn't as excited about all the smart home gadgets in my house, and I realized that my entire smart home experience was inconsistent and slow. From my perspective, if I'm replacing dumb objects with smart ones, they should be better, or at least the same in terms of performance. But when you flip a switch and you have to wait several seconds for a light to turn on or off, um, or not at all, that actually becomes quite annoying. Now, after a bit of troubleshooting, I realized that Wi-Fi was my problem. Uh, so I went and upgraded my Wi-Fi network and now everything works generally a little bit better But I did have to buy more gear in order to make that happen So in the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you what I discovered throughout this entire ordeal I'm going to cover the right reason why I needed better Wi-Fi for my smart home How I detected the dead spots in my home I'm going to share with you how bad Wi-Fi affected my smart home gadgets Then I'm going to tell you how I fixed it all and some of the issues I came across after the upgrade At Smart Home Reviews A, we actually base all the reviews on actual usage Novel idea, right? We don't have test houses like CNET does. We only have a house, which means we actually have to live through all the pros and cons of all the devices we use, which is great when it works, but when you're trying to figure stuff out and it breaks, well, it sucks. Now, why is a strong Wi-Fi network important in a smart home? Well, it's, the Wi-Fi is kind of the glue that kind of holds everything together. The stronger network you have, the better off your smart home's gonna be. It's kind of like, you know, basic electricity to your lights. If you've got poor connections everywhere, well, you know, your house is just gonna suck. So the hardware by itself, certain lines like the Elgato Eve lineup are based on Bluetooth, while the rest are based on Wi-Fi. If you're accessing your devices remotely, everything goes through the Wi-Fi. Now having a strong Wi-Fi network is absolutely needed for those planning on using Siri, Alexa, or Google Home to verbally control their devices. A bad Wi-Fi network might be slightly more tolerable with Apple Home with its Home App UI, since you can see what devices aren't working or what's not responding. Now I think many people would be surprised at the amount of dead spots in their Wi-Fi setup. In general, most of us don't use Wi-Fi in the corners of our house. By default, I think we spend most of our time in the middle areas of a room. But with smart home gadgets, we tend to put them in the corners and out of way places where the Wi-Fi might not be as good. For example, in this bedroom, there's a Hue Ambience light in the nightstand. Prior to my Wi-Fi upgrade, there was, I'd say, about a 30% chance I could turn the light on and off. It almost felt like if my neighbor was using their microwave, I wouldn't be able to access the light. I will add that the Bluetooth smart home gadgets are more responsive when you're actually in range of them. They are noticeably slower if you're trying to access them remotely. I do have a feeling that the limited range of Bluetooth 4.0 has something to do with this. Uh, with the poor response times, Bluetooth 5.0 should solve this problem, but I only know of a few of the newer phones having this updated chip. Now one of the things I realized while doing this video was how much money I was actually, we'll say, Wasting. Wasting in the sense that I pay almost a thousand dollars for my internet over a span of an entire year and I'm definitely not getting the speeds that I should be. You know, technically my speeds would be equivalent to a package that's half the price, which is kind of insulting in a way I'll say. And you know, to make the face punching a little worse is like, you know, I've already spent, you know, a thousand dollars on my internet or my internet's kind of a fixed cost. It's going to be there regardless, but I've spent so much more money on these smart home gadgets and I've not gotten the best use out of them because of my crappy Wi-Fi. Here's what my old Wi-Fi setup looked like. Well, basically up until 2017. I live in a long two-story house. My ISP installed my router in the basement of my house, which was silly to me, but they didn't give me a choice. I split the Wi-Fi on the router between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands. In addition to the router, I also had an airport extreme connected to the router running a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network on the main floor. The majority of my smart home gadgets were connected through the airport extreme. Now, when I started doing all this smart home stuff in 2017 and early 2017, I thought having two bands, having the 2.4 gigahertz and having the 5 gigahertz and another 2.4 gigahertz would be beneficial in terms of trying to keep everything um, organized, we'll say. And that definitely wasn't the case. Now, when it was kind of funny. After the upgrade, all the Hue stuff that I had, I couldn't access it on the other network. It was kind of weird. I thought I could before, but I definitely couldn't after the upgrade. So keeping everything on one network is probably going to be the best solution for basically anybody else. Say. Now as a side note, if you don't know the difference between 2.4 and 5, 2.4 gives you better range, but has lower speeds. 5 gets you a better, it's way faster, but you don't have quite as good coverage, we'll say. And you'll definitely see the difference between the two bands.
bends, well, in the next minute. Now to detect the dead spots in my home, I took Wi-Fi tests at various locations around my home. Now I live in a house that's over 100 years old, which is an important feature because there has been a new addition added in the late 80s. My house is approximately 75 feet long by 20 foot wide, so there's a lot of length that the Wi-Fi needs to cover. To measure the Wi-Fi, I used an app called Dr. Wi-Fi, and Dr. Wi-Fi seemed like the best app out there, um, out of the few that actually exist on the App Store when it comes to measuring Wi-Fi strength. It took several days to map out my Wi-Fi multiple times, and well, here's a breakdown of how awful it is in my home. When it comes to signal strength, the smaller the number, the worse the signal is. So it makes sense that the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands were strongest right beside the router. Now the distance between my office and router is approximately 20 feet, but you'll notice that the signal drop is quite significant. Why? Because the signal has to go through part of the concrete foundation from the original home. So despite having two routers on different floors, about half my home is getting extremely poor Wi-Fi coverage. The last punch in the face is that the best coverage in the, is in the basement where nobody spends any time it's kind of like the storage area for everything else in my home. Now what's the effect of poor Wi-Fi strength on actual internet usage? Using the Oakless speed test app, I record the speeds in the same areas in the same manner over a bunch, several days. And well, at the source, my connection speed was close to, well, it's about 175 upload and download, which is pretty crazy. Through the concrete wall, the connection speed is 30 and 37. So like, I lose so much because of that concrete wall. So how does bad Wi-Fi affect my smart home gadgets? My Nest Cam indoor would be laggy as crap and it would have to buffer every few seconds, which is unacceptable to me when I'm trying to monitor my kid. I had a similar issue with the video feed coming from the D-Link Omna as well. The Schlage lock on my back door was extremely flaky when I wasn't home, which was a problem when I was trying to let family members in. On the old Wi-Fi network, the notifications for my door would be delayed for up to an hour, which isn't that useful when it comes to notifications. For Bluetooth devices like the locks in the Elgato Eve lineup, they generally respond very well, again, when you're at home, but remote access will be an issue. So bad Wi-Fi means bad response times. The biggest pain in my butt were actually the smart lights. My LifeX bulbs were probably 80% of the time on the old network. My Hue bulbs in my bedrooms were basically unusable, and my Aurora wasn't always available. In fact, it kind of uninstalled itself. I'm not quite sure how. Part of the problem is the fact that I spent most of my time connected to the 5 gigahertz network, whereas on all the other devices sat on the Apple home Wi-Fi network. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, useful, or semi-entertaining, or you like my dog in a red and white bow tie, uh, consider getting all your smart home gadgets or any sort of gadgets through my Amazon links. This video is completely unsponsored. All the stuff that you're seeing, all these smart home uh, platforms and whatnot, devices I've paid for out of my own pockets. And you know, I, I'm a techie. I do this stuff. If you want to help me make more videos in the future, uh, consider going through those links. It doesn't cost you any more, and I get a small commission. So, you know, win-win for everybody. So what did I do to fix this issue? I'll be honest, the only way I was able to fix my problem was to spend money. The first thing I did was to call my ISP and complain about my wireless internet to see you know, what they would do. They sent over a tech, told me nothing. The tech solution was to spend more money and suggested I buy a random assortment of gear from the ISP. So the next thing I tried doing was assigning my Wi-Fi networks to sit on channels that were relatively free. Now this solution did improve my Wi-Fi connection slightly but I was still unable to use the smart home gadgets at the edge of my home. Now I did contemplate getting a few more Cat5 outlets wired into my old house and moving the router, but still the concrete foundation was going to be an issue regardless of where I set up the routers. Either the front of the house was gonna suck or the back of the house was gonna suck. So the next thing to do was to see what my money could buy. I was most interested with mesh Wi-Fi networks as my experience with Wi-Fi extenders using Apple Airport Expresses was mediocre at best. I generally had my mindset on the Google Wi-Fi system System as it would give me more reason to use my Google Home since it's been poorly neglected in the last few months. I won't go into much detail, but the differences between the extenders and mesh network, well, generally price mesh networks are more expensive, but difference number two is that they're way easier to set up. And number three is speed. From my perspective, mesh networks are gonna be faster as each hub works with one another, whereas in extenders, I would say the connection is linear. So if, you're, if one of the uh, links is slow, then the rest of the links are going to be slow. Setting up Google Wi-Fi was simple as all I had to do was download the Google Wi-Fi app and follow the steps. I went with the three-node setup as I felt 
the length of my house was going to be an issue. I ended up putting a node in the living room, one right beside the router in the basement, and one in the master bedroom. I went and retested the Wi-Fi and everything was noticeably better. Overall, the signal strength of my home improved in every room and there was a minus 9 dBm signal right beside the router, which is a number I've never ever seen before. Having decent Wi-Fi in the bedrooms is great, but with the new setup, the worst room is still my office, which is where I spend all my time. But still, it's a decent upgrade from the previous setup. When it comes to download speeds, everything in the house was way faster. The area with the most improvement were the bedrooms on the second floor and the back of the house. Basically, areas that didn't have Wi-Fi now have Wi-Fi. I could lay down on my bed upstairs and watch Netflix if I really wanted to, I don't, or use the video feed from a D-Link Omni to check to see if my dumb front door is locked, which is kind of handy. Every light, after a couple of reinstall hassles, is now accessible by Alexa, Siri, and Google Home, regardless of where the lights are and regardless of where I am in the home. One of the things I was hoping to do was to extend my Wi-Fi to my garage. There's between the back door and my garage, it's about 20 feet, and <laughs> I didn't get anything at the back of my house. I definitely didn't get anything uh, with, in the garage with my old Wi-Fi setup. With the upgraded network, I do have Wi-Fi in the garage. It's not great, but that means I get to put a, well, I have options to put more smart home gadgets. I was actually surprised at how much better my internet connection was at my home. After the upgrade, everything just seemed snappier. Pages loaded quicker, images and Instagram just showed up. When it comes to my smart home, everything now works. Lights work, the switches trigger when they're supposed to, which is nice. Now, one of the things that really surprised me that I didn't think would happen was my use of smart home automations. Now, automations are probably one of the coolest things about smart home gadgets. It's actually probably the biggest differentiator, I would say, between dumb things and smart things when it comes to your home. With the Portland Wi-Fi network, I found that my automations would partially fire or not fire at all, and I got to the point where I just turned them all off because it was that frustrating. But with my upgraded Wi-Fi, I found myself setting up more scenes, setting up even more timers, even more automations, because I know they're gonna fire. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm so impressed with this Wi-Fi upgrade is that I'm really, I still can't quite quant quantify the value that I'm getting from, you know, this upgraded network. Like I really, really didn't think it'd be this cool or awesome. But there were a couple of hiccups that I had to deal with. I had to re-add half of my smart home gadgets. I didn't make the switch over easily. I was thinking that the ones that you can access through the internet would just find a new thing and ask me for the new Wi-Fi. It didn't. Uh, yeah, and this entire process of re-adding kind of makes sense, but I didn't realize how tedious the process was until I had to go and do it all again. The only piece of hardware that I couldn't get working on my new network was the iHome 5-in-1 sensor, as it couldn't recognize the 2.4 gigahertz band in the Google Wi-Fi network, so it's sitting on the old airport extreme network. I looked into splitting Google Wi-Fi into two bands again, but there's nothing in the app that allows me to do it easily. And I guess that's kind of a downfall of Google Wi-Fi is that I don't think there's a lot of customization that you can do to your network. My Nano Leaf Aurora couldn't immediately be added to Google Wi-Fi, even though their website says Google Wi-Fi was a recommended problem. It took multiple resets of the hardware before I was able to add the panel lighting. I had a similar issue with one of my LifeX bulbs. It took so many resets before I was able to re-add it to the home network, which is frustrating. For Alexa, I couldn't see my Hue lights anymore for some odd reason, so I had to re-add them back into Alexa and then was reminded of how painful it is to actually install things uh, through Amazon Smart Home Setup. Now the question I have for you guys is that Google Wi-Fi isn't cheap. Is this improved Wi-Fi access worth the $400 I paid? On a yearly basis, I pay almost $1,000 for internet, and I wasn't getting the benefit of the speeds I was paying for. So given that my ISP put my router in a stupid place and I live in a long house, I'm not terribly annoyed at the $400 investment in my Wi-Fi. But that's just me. What would you guys do? What do you Let me know. Is 400 bucks too much of an upfront investment? Capital cost, we'll say, uh, when it comes to upgrading your Wi-Fi in your uh, home. Leave them in the comment section below. I'd like to know what you guys think. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. I produce content as of lately, quite irregularly, but because these videos are taking so long, I can't do one a week. It's just impossible, really, with the, how much time it takes to do one of these videos. Uh, this is Monty Doho. He is the greatest schnoodle in the world. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching.